We want to represent this function as a power series and we kind of go back to the one thing we know which is we have this power series of u to the n that is 1 over 1 minus u. But the problem here is we have a constant 3 that's fine but in the denominator we have 1 minus u but it's quantity squared. So how am I going to deal with that? Actually, let's write out some of the terms of this power series. It'd be 1 plus u plus u squared plus u to the third and so forth. And now let's think about taking the derivative of this power series. If we differentiate here, we have power rule. Power out in front, decrease the power by 1. But that equals, what if we take the derivative here? Well, that's going to be 1 over 1 minus u squared. Aha, just what we want, because think of this as 1 minus u to the negative 1. So we do a power rule chain rule. Power out in front gives me a negative 1. Decrease the power by 1, so the quantity is to the negative 2. But then the chain rule multiplied by a negative 1. So the negative disappears, and we can express this function like this. Now, if we did this term by term, this would be gone. This would be 1 plus 2u plus 3u squared and so forth. What we want to use here is this derivative power series so that we can match it up with what we've got up here. So if we did that and we let our u be 10 minus x and then we multiplied by this constant of 3 we would have it. So we're going to write that down so we have 3 sum as we go from 0 to infinity of n and then right here we're going to put in our 10x to the n minus 1. Now we're going to actually doctor this up just a little bit because if we put in 0 we see we just get 0 and then when we put in 1 we basically get the 1 that was right here. And so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to express this and I am going to start with and shift things so that when I put in 0 I get this first term of 1. So I'm going to write this as an n plus 1 and then this is going to be 10x to the n. That way when I put the 0 in I get this first term right here and so forth. So maybe just a little bit better way to express this. And now we can figure out our coefficients and we can also figure out our radius of convergence. So basically if we put in 0 we get out of this a 1 and then we got to multiply it by that 3. So our C0 is 3. C1 if we put in a 1 we have 2 here times 10 is 20 times 3 is 60. So we're going to have 60 on our x term. So let's figure out c sub 2. So if we put in a 2, 2 plus 1 is 3 times the 3 out in front is 9. And we'd have 10 squared as well. So that's going to make that 900. So our next term was 900 x to the second. So if we do our next term, we're going to have 3 times 3 plus 1 times 10 x to the third. So that's going to be 12 with three zeros. So our next coefficient is 12,000. And then figuring out the next coefficient, so that'll be our fifth coefficient, we would put a 4 in and trying to figure out where to write it. We'll fit it right here. 3, putting a 4 here, that's times 5. And then we can see with that that we're going to need, we're going to have 10x to the fourth, so we're going to need four zeros. So 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. So our coefficient is 150,000. Okay, our last thing we want to do then is we want to figure out the radius of convergence. And the radius of convergence is the same for a power series and its derivatives. So we are going to be able to say the absolute value of u needs to be less than 1. And in our case, the u was 10x. So the absolute value of x needs to be less than 1 tenth. So our radius of convergence is 0.1 or 1 tenth.